Hey, if you're working in Fusion 360, you probably need to use arcs when sketching, but there's three different options. So let's cover those options today and talk about some pro tips on when to use them and different ways to dimension them. So the first thing you need to do in Fusion is go to the sketch, create sketch and choose the plane that you wanna work on. Or if you already have an existing sketch, find it down at the bottom, right click or double click. You're in edit sketch mode and now let's go up to the arcs. We're gonna go to create and find arc. You have three different options here. I'm gonna choose three point arc. This is probably the most flexible and easiest to use. So if I were to click these two endpoints, you can see that I can drag it inverted. I can drag it out. I can solve just about however I want. This is not adding tangency or any other important constraints. It's just giving you the flexibility to create what kind of arc, whatever arc that you'd like. I place it and now what I'd like to do is add some dimensions. I'll go to smart dimension or find it right here on the sketch toolbar. And I'm gonna click this arc and choose to place it. And that's gonna give me the radius. So you can put in the value, type in whatever you want, it'll update. But I have not dimensioned the horizontal distance or maybe vertical. I could do the vertical distance. I could do the true length between them, or I could do the uh, horizontal, excuse me, between endpoints. So if I say this is 220, now I have an arc that is almost fully defined. So can I move the center point? I cannot, so I can drag. So it's not sure how it should solve at this line. So do we want some tangency or do we maybe want the vertical distance between the endpoint and this endpoint? So if I place this, now the arc is completely defined. Now, what if you know this radius value, you actually know the diameter? Well, if you right click on it, and you may have to hit escape a few times, if you've uh, still in coming from another selection, if you right click, you should see toggle diameter, but just hit escape a few times if you're not seeing it. This allows you to display it as a, di a diameter dimension instead of radius. By default, all of your arcs will be in a radius value just because it's not a complete circle. Now let's try this one again. What if I wanted to place this as my center of the arc and then I wanna paint that kind of to create whatever arcs possible but keeping that center with that left origin point. All right, next, let's look at a different way we can do this arc. We'll come down to the arcs and find center point arc. What I want to do is I want this to be the center of my arc. So I place that and now it's saying, where's your, your first point of your arc in space? So I'll select this endpoint, and it lets me drag. I can go all the way around or I can just drag a partial. And so now I have some different things I can do to define it, but the center has been defined as well as the first, the endpoints of your arc, but it's still draggable. I can still move it and this will also move. So I still have to define the distance from where this sits or the relationship with that it might have. So if I say that these two endpoints line up horizontally, it's going to drag it over and say line up horizontally and I can finish this with a line command. And there we go. What else is missing for this arc? You can see that I can drag this one I can still drag out the overall value. So there's a lot of different ways that I can define this. I could do it with a radius. Let's place that, Let's say 500. And then the, anything blue in your fusion sketch, if it can be dragged, that means that it's not defined yet. So it's a good practice to go ahead and finish defining your sketches. I'll add another dimension right here and so this is to find everything looks like it's completed and we use that center point arc to get here. Okay, finally, let's talk about the tangent arc. This is a great one, super powerful. You probably use this more often than you think. So I'm gonna search for it. I'll hit S for search and then I'm going to type in arc. You'll notice all the different arcs pop up. I'm gonna use tangent arc. I'm gonna show you a shortcut too for that one, just a minute. What this is doing is solving tangency from this line coming out 
or we can select this line, come down, try the arc again. I'm going to right click and choose the tangent arc. I'm going to come in this angle. And you can see it's solving tangency from that lower vertical line. So this line has a smooth transition into this arc and it adds this tangent constraint. If you need a reminder about tangency, when it comes to a circle, if you were to draw a line going over it and you wanted it to touch, but only in one point, that's tangency. That's helpful when it comes to lines and complete circle, but one thing I like to think of, this just means that it's gonna have a nice smooth transition between your line to arc uh, in that curvature. So if I add line and this arc and make them tangent, it's gonna make a smoother transition between them. I can then assign the radius value and then finish dimensioning the rest of this sketch. Now, one shortcut for this tool is when you're sketching, if you have a sketch line and you're about to you know, sketch a second line, what you can do is you can, instead of placing another line, is just come back and drag out. Now let's do another one. So if I'm in the line command and I change my mind, I'm about to do it, I'll click and drag. It'll turn it into that tangent arc and let me solve that. But one thing I will say about these shortcuts, if they bother you, if they frustrate you, don't use them. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Just go up to find your art command and use the one you want or hit that S key for search and then search for that arc that you want. Thanks for watching. We're working our way through Fusion 360 features. I'll see you in the next video.